Jones. For me, Stanford was everything. It was everything since I was 14 because that's when I decided that I was going to be an Olympian. And I was going to wake up at 5, take zero period, uh, lift five days a week, join a swim team, all because I want to be an Olympian. I want to go to Stanford. Stanford at that time was the best, right? Best school. And that's how, you know, really inspired me to do have my grades and everything and, and, and take school seriously and just be responsible. And then I got here, I met my wife my first year, you know, and met some of my best friends still to today, you know, and having Vargas and Dante as two of my coaches. I mean, I look back and like, just so blessed with the number of coaches that I've had. Starting with my dad, Klaus Barth, then going to John Vargas, Dante, Racco Rudich, uh, you know, Terry, Robert, now to uh, Dan. Yeah, I got going then going to Europe and having some of those top yeah, coaches. Fadovich is now the head coach of Australia. Yeah, I got Gorilla first. Oh, yeah. The head coach of Montenegro was my coach. So just really great perspectives on, on all these guys and their minds and their water polo minds. It's just been great. You know, like one of the reasons that uh, I always have my coffee and espresso and or espresso and uh, newspaper before games is so I try to think about something other than water polo. Because like to be great, you can't just Dada. show up the morning of and start thinking of the game. Like my entire year is about thinking of the game, right? Every single thing from Dada, look who's gonna play with gorilla. Dreaming the night I know who I'm playing against. I wake up in the morning, I'm brushing my teeth, I'm thinking of the guys that I'm playing against. And really the mornings before a game, I'm so overly prepared that if I think about it more than I do, then I'm gonna get nervous. I actually did, as a 17 year old, I had my first coffee in Australia with the national team guys, a lot of bad influences back then. And everyone would sit around and have an espresso before the games. And I started doing the same thing. Um, except I would have an espresso and then I'd put Tiger Balm under my nose and get myself all pumped up and then I'd go out there and I'd be a total psychopath. And so as other guys were getting themselves pumped up and screaming and yelling in there, I was still doing the espresso and then I would start thinking about the game. Then I realized that would get me too nervous. And I don't know when the change was, I think it was in the Olympics, in 2000 Olympics. They would always have this uh, this Olympic newspaper, and you could read about all the sports. So I would have my co I would have a coffee before the game, and I just read about all the sports. And I remember that really helped. Definitely the thing I'll, I'll miss most about playing with water polo at a high level, or playing the sport in general, is is the teammates. You know, there's we're lucky in our sport because. Every team that I went to overseas, every every team that I played for here in the States, every new national team, I had immediately 15 best friends. Doesn't mean you're all best friends, but they're these guys that you live and die for each other. And you create this, this friendship and you go on trips together and it's really only you guys against the world. And that's the hardest part. Those are the moments that when I, even these last six months, do I want to train? I didn't mind training. I definitely don't want to play. But it's those those little moments when it's just you and your teammates on a trip and you guys are taking them out to, to a new dinner or you're exploring something together or you're suffering together and it's it's great, you know, it's those moments. What kind of comes to mind when you're when you're driving back on this campus at Stanford? Just the good memories, you know. The tailgating out here. The games, we used to always have water polo and then football, and water polo would be packed. I mean, we played like B at BYU. Whoever we played at home, there was a crowd of 1,500 people minimum. There was never a game my junior and senior year where the, that thing wasn't packed. And you'd get everyone there, everyone would go to the tailgate, and then some would make it to the football games. <laughs> Try 
to stuff it in near side, and he does. Score the goal for Azevedo, and a point to the crowd. And the power play score is there for the captain. wanted anywhere else, that's for sure. In front of a crowd, in front of the school where I literally met my wife, where so many things happened in my career, where I won my fourth team awards. I mean, if I was going to do, like we talked about, was I going to do a last game or not, it's here, so I'm doing the last game. Does this place look like you remember it? It's the same. It hasn't changed anything, except for we, we had a better code to get in the locker room. Theirs is one, two, three, so everyone knows. <laughs> no one happened to stay for you. Tony, on behalf of USA Water Polo, we just want to thank you for inspiring so many people and for multiple generations of water polo players across the country that look up to you and inspiring future water polo here in America for all of us. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for all that you do. We appreciate you and thank you. Tony, thank you for all the great moments and memories and championships that you've had here at Stanford, um, as well as with Team USA. And on behalf of Stanford University, the athletic department, and men's water polo, I'd like to present you with a token of our appreciation. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, everyone. You know, uh, thank you, Coach Vargas believed in me when I was a 16 year old and I went to my first Olympics with you and you were my we won a championship here at Stanford and I met my wife here at Stanford had some great memories Dante we won our first championship here I uh, meant the world that I could end my career here um, I thought I'd feel a little better after a six-month taper but I guess I needed a couple more months um, coach Adovich thank you for being the brainchild behind all this and making this happen. USA Water Polo, thank you. Dad, you are who I am. Thank you so much. Croatia, one of my favorite countries in the entire world. My son, Jivo, <laughs> was born there. You know, all I say is uh, 22 years ago, I was inspired, just like a lot of you young kids, uh, by, a, by a game and by an athlete. And I hope for those of you that were here at the clinic today or those of you watching, when I was inspired, it took four years of harder work, you know, hard work that no one imagined I could do, and I did it, and became an Olympian four years later. There's nothing better for me than ending with these guys because my life has been about these boys here. I've literally bled, sweat, and cried with Team USA, and that's going to be what I'm going to miss most. These guys, because they are the ones that made me who I am today, and you know being one of 13 people chosen every four years to represent your country, there is no better feeling than that. And don't forget that. I love you guys. Thank you everyone for coming. Let's go. Go USA. reality was is I played way more than I thought I'd play. I played six and a half minutes the first quarter, which is unbelievable. Um, but honestly, it was, it, was, it was better than I imagined. You know, the moment, I was pretty nervous more than maybe an Olympic game. But the moment that I got out there with the guys and playing the sport that I love and I've done for so long, it just kind of came together and I felt fine out there, honestly. And once I got that G in there, I knew I knew it was going to be smooth after that, and and then having you know everything happen at halftime, it was really emotional. It's a moment I'll never I'll never forget.